Bills. Road to the championship truly starts today. The best of the best, the Elite Eight. It's championship Friday, man. Put your extra mouthpiece in. Pad up. Take some extra Tylenol. Let's go play 60, man. The road to Glendale. Right here, baby. No excuses. Rent's due. Rent's due. No excuses. Well, he may be a little bit. Ba- uh, nobody cares. You know that shirt Lamar Jackson wears? Nobody cares. That's a great shirt and a theme for this weekend. Nobody cares about excuses. Nobody gives a shit about anything. Win. Win the game. Win the game. Giants and Eagles. um, Jags and Chiefs. Bengals and Bills. Cowboys and Niners. It's going to be a great championship weekend. It really is. And the road to Glendale is going to be really exciting to watch. Look, wild card weekend is great. And I told you guys this. Look, man, wild card weekend, divisional round, and conference championships are traditionally the best football of the year. They did not disappoint. The team that disappointed the most last week were the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. They blew out loud. Time to go here, man. Time to go. Here, let's start it out here with the Eagles. Do the Eagles stop the hype train known as Daniel Jones? And I want to say this to you. Real quick out of the top here. Jalen Hurts needs a Philly moment. I'll say it again. Jalen Hurts needs a Philly moment. All the greatest athletes in the history of that city have had a moment that brought a championship. Malone, 83. Rose, in 80, along with Schmidt. Right? Nick Foles. Zach Ertz. All these guys had great Philly moments. How about just recently in Philly, Bryce Harper? Right, Xander? That home run that he basically carried the entire city said, here we go. And he gets up to the plate and he has a Philly moment. That's what I'm talking about. Being remembered. Joe Montana, the catch. The drive. All those great spectacular moments. Dude, Tyree Kill is the most famous New York Giant wide receiver in history. It's not Beckham. He had a Super Bowl moment. Eli Manning. Nobody would put Eli Manning on a top 10 list. When it came to greatest quarterbacks of all time. I'll tell you what, though. He did beat the GOAT twice in MVP fashion. Right? Everybody has a moment. Jalen hasn't had one yet. There's no moment in his career. Zero. This is where legacies, again, as we say, are built. Okay, legacies are built in the postseason. You make your own history in the postseason. How many times have you guys come out, rightfully so, and you tell me about all these empty calorie stats that Kirk Cousins have? As far as I'm concerned, Jalen Hurts has empty calorie stats. Kurt won a ton of games. Kurt puts a ton of yards up. Kurt hasn't won shit. No one looks at him as an elite guy. Hey, how about this? Lamar Jackson. You got to be a little bit more successful in the postseason, don't you, Lamar? With all the great things that you accomplished in the regular season, unanimous MVP, led the NFL in touchdown passes, those are all tremendous achievements. But when you get to the postseason, it's got to be more than just one. Everyone makes it. 
Everyone. It's not shade. It's reality. And in a city like Philly, that's how you remember these guys. Hey, I'll tell you the most unbelievable misconception that's going on about Jalen Hurts is the fact that Eagle fans and people around the country think the reason that you like Jalen is because he works hard. The reason you like Jalen is because you see the potential of something that could be. It's not because he's a good dude. Nobody gives a shit about that. Good dudes, whatever. Coming over to my house for dinner matters. Showing up at Lincoln Financial to win a ball game, it has no bearing. Has zero bearing. This is about winning ball games. Jalen Hurts needs a Philly moment. Foles has one. Look at look at the three superstar athletes you have in Philly right now. Dude, Joel Embiid is making a run at the MVP again. And I don't think they'll catch Boston in the East. I don't. But they're kind of right there with Milwaukee. There was conversation of potentially people thinking that maybe the best thing to do is trade him. (laughs) You might want to wipe that one out. You might want to take that take back. Then you got Harper leading your team to the series. Look at how all these cool young players you have. And now you got Hurts. Hurts is the least accomplished superstar in your city. But if he starts winning postseason games, people are going to start looking at him in a whole different light and even more revered. Okay? Even more revered. See, I can't sit here and go, well, he's going to do I'm not that guy, dude. I look at what people, and, and, and people, it's, it's so crazy because people will look at me and go, you changed your take. I did because the player improved or he got worse. Like Daniel Jones. Daniel Jones got better, I think. I'm not a forecaster. I'm a guy that looks at trends. What people do. I look at it. The result, more more so than the method. That's why someone goes, so Sills, you're saying that you got to, you know, you, you think they can win this week, but you don't like dual threat? Well, that's what the Eagles have built. This is the dinner they serve. And it's been successful. There's a lot of people in the restaurant. They got a lot of patrons. May not be my style. But that doesn't mean it doesn't work. Right? I can't wait to see this thing. I, I love, you know, the reality. Sh- this is a reality show that we don't have the script to. You know, all these reality shows you watch on television, you see all the shows on TV and you go, well, we know what the ending's going to be because it's a movie. The NFL is the greatest running reality television show that you just don't know. And it's why. Millions and millions and millions and millions of people show up each and every single weekend to watch the games. Hey, by the way, if they get bounced by the Giants or they get bounced in the conference championship, would this Eagle season be a complete failure? Would this would this be a complete failure if the Eagles don't get to the Super Bowl in Glendale? Yes or no? I'm curious how you look at this. Is is this Super Bowl or bust? Five Star says, indeed. Mike says, not at all. Go Sixer says, yes. Jeremiah, absolutely. I think it actually would be yes. Rock says, yes. Got to win one playoff game, G Money says. No disappointed. Absolutely. They push all their chips into the center of the table. Can I ask you guys this, though? Don't you admire that point, what Warrior's saying? 
Ball bounces a funny way sometimes. Double doinker. Wide right. Fumble. A, a, a Velcro helmet catch. It's funny. It's true, though, right? Ball bounces a funny way. Double doinker. Lose by a double doinker. It'd be a failure? I'm, I, you know what? I don't want to give you a shitty answer on that. I don't know. I don't know. By the way, Philly 500 will join us at 4.30 Eastern time. We'll get our boy's thoughts. He will step in with us at 4.30 Eastern time. And I'll ask him the question, Super Bowl or bust? Super Bowl or bust? Is Hurts feeling the pressure? Great question. We're going to get to that here in a second here. I'm going to tell you how this will play out, in my opinion, on Saturday night. Very impressive performance by the Eagles opponent, the New York Giants, this past week against Minnesota. However, let's temper this. Minnesota, did we believe in them all year? I wouldn't say I did. Right? I would say I did not. And I'm pretty sure a lot of people in here did not believe that the Minnesota Vikings were what their record was. You see, here, here, here's a great example of that. You win 12, 13 games, people could fire at me, Minnesota Vikings, 12 or 13 wins. Did I think that team was that team? Absolutely not. 14 and three Eagles. Did I think that they were that team? Yes. Yes. Yes, because just about every game they were in, they dominated. They just about dominated every game they were in. Okay. They were very impressive against the Vikings, the Giants. Jones, in my opinion, okay. I don't believe he's going to have the windows to throw the football in that he did against that Donatell defense. Those windows were wide open, and I'm talking passing windows. I think they're going to be tighter windows for Daniel Jones to operate because I think the Eagles are going to do a better job at containing the edges against him. Barkley's going to be a key in this thing here. That tight end's going to be a key. But what they're going to try to do immediately to the Eagles is spread them out so that they can create passing lanes for Daniel Jones. I believe they'll be tighter. Okay? The turnover is going to be enormous in a game with two dual-threat quarterbacks. And I hate to do the obvious, but the team with the least amount of turnovers is probably going to win this thing. And who's been more apt not to turn it over? I know Jones has done a better job of it, and that's probably been one of the turnarounds. But let's not forget again, three straight days I said this to you. You know, people are talking like the Giants are rolling into this thing where they're on a high note. They're three, five, and one. We're not talking about an 11-game win streak up in San Francisco here. We're talking about a team that's kind of finding themselves now. Minnesota had these gigantic open... I mean, every time I watched Daniel Jones throw the ball, it looked like a barn door was open. It looked like a college, it looked like a college game. They were wide open. Some of those passing lanes, I couldn't believe. Now, that was because of his versatility and him being able to get out in the perimeter and roll. Okay? The Giants OC, Mike Kafka has done a well of a job at one thing, protecting the football and putting this kid, Daniel Jones, in a position to succeed. He really has. Him and Dable have crafted this kid. And let's put it this way. At the beginning of the year, would we not have agreed this? Okay? Brian, the Giants are peaking, I think. But remember something, Brian. When you say peaking, do you think they're going to do it again in back-to-back playoff games? Man. We're not talking about back-to-back regular season games. These are back-to-back playoff games. The pressure is mounted. You think he and that staff and everyone 
puts that game. And again, I think the confidence level of beating Minnesota in Minnesota, I think that goes so far. Because once you get into a fight, what's Mike Tyson saying? Hey, everyone's got to plan it until you get punched in the head. Then we'll find out who you are. So, I mean, I think they're playing well. Okay, I do. I think they're playing better. And this Kafka guy has done a great job. I'm going to show you what this team has done. Okay? At the beginning of the season, this team was a running back-centric football team. Daniel Jones was an ornament. Don't turn the ball over. Get Barkley going. Let's get the offense going. And they got out to some success. All of a sudden, there was a lull in the season for the Giants. What happened? Team started figuring it out. Stop Barkley, stop the Giants. They had to get Jones going. He just couldn't be a signature back there or a figure or a figure just sitting back there and not being utilized. The most important player position on the field has to be a factor in winning ball games. So what did they do? They took some pages out of the Philly playbook. Well, the kid moves rolls well, he moves in the pocket well, and he moves out in space well. Let's see if we can craft something. Well, guess what? At the beginning of the season, it was a Barkley team. Now, it looks more like Daniel Jones is carrying the football team. They've gone through that entire transition from the beginning of the season on being a Saquon Barkley team to being a Daniel Jones team. That's quite an accomplishment. For a guy they didn't even believe in. You don't, you, you don't sit here and tell me on January 20th you believed in Daniel Jones in September when you didn't pick his fifth-year option up. You could tell me all the shit you want in the media, but your actions are this. Hey, and by the way, the Giants, as I've been saying the last week here, the Giants are in a pickle here. <laughs> are you going to franchise? Are you going to franchise tag the guy? In the offseason, that's $46.3 million. Good luck to you. Are you going to give him a three-year contract at $150 million? What are you going to do? I mean, Daniel Jones is going to get paid, especially if he goes in there and upsets that team. You know, I'll tell you something. I feel like I might take the Giants in the points because I don't think this thing is going to be seven and a half. I'm going to get to that here in a minute. Hertz's health is a big issue here. We're going to find out about the play calling and Shane Steichen on what he can or cannot do right away. Okay, will they get Goddard going like I said yesterday? Goddard's the key to this because the giant linebackers can't cover tight ends. Put on the game film. They cannot cover tight ends. Get Sanders going. Run him. 28. Dude, Miles Sanders better get 28 carries in this ball game. And Jalen around 12. That's what I want to see. 28 to 12, but not the other way. Jalen, if if they play this right, getting, getting Goddard going, they could win this game by 14 points. They don't. And they think they're going to start and start to establish the perimeter. They're going to get beat. Because that means... They're cutting back on what they're going to do with Jalen Hurts. Hurts has got to be full go, man. Full go. By the way, if I were the Eagles, I would be preparing. And fans, I would be preparing. If Hurts has to come out because he got dinked, I would have plays designed especially for Gardner Minshew. And if Lane can't finish, you better have plan B. What's your plan B? Are you flipping Mulata? Are you keeping Goddard in? You keep Goddard in? What's that do? Takes him out of the offensive passing attack. Are you going to go two tight end set? How are you? Miles Sanders' knee injury. How are you going to accommodate that? How are you going to adjust to that? If they start attacking the middle zone because Avante Maddox isn't back there. And you know, the linebackers on the giant or Eagles struggle on covering tight ends and backs themselves. Okay. 
Jalen Hurts has got a lot on the line here. He does. He's got a lot on the line here. Okay? I'm going to get to him in a minute here. Him personally. And guess what's happened in New York? The defensive line has showed up finally. Their interior tackles are the best in the NFL. They, they got the two best interior D tackles in the league, and they sh- have shown up. And I would say they've shown up the last five weeks. I watched them, and they're 22 the last couple weeks. I'll tell you something. That Dexter Lawrence is a machine. You are not – that matchup against Landon Dickerson, I can't wait to watch that. Okay? Landon Dickerson is going to have his hands full. The other guy, Williams, too. That's going to be an interesting matchup. And then you're going to put KV on Thibodeau over on Lane. I would, I would, I would stress Lane out immediately. And the Giants, in my opinion, like Wink, I think Martindale's going to go over there. And I believe that they're going to run as many games as they possibly can on Lane to try to stress that injury he has. Move him, move his feet, run him in a wide nine. Get them out there. And if they see Lane is back to Lane, they'll move Thibodeau. And you'll know that Lane is good to go. If you start seeing Lane having issues and struggling, they're going to attack that side. And when they get Driscoll in there, that's going to make it a long game as well. The giant D-line has showed up. Okay, he and that team has showed up. Okay. I can't wait to see this. That's a different giant defense the last couple weeks. That's a different looking defense. I'm going to be interested to see how this thing matches up. You know, I mean, hey, I thought Kelsey did a nice job on him in week 14. Let's see if they do it again. And now look. Minnesota's O-line versus the Eagle O-line, it's like comparing the moon and the sun. You can't. You can't. you got Hall of Famers littered all over the line, all pros everywhere in the O-line, everywhere. You don't have that on the Eagle defensive line, but you got it. Think about it. you got Hall of Famers and pro bowlers at almost, they do, at every position. Tackles, guards, center. Okay? That's a Hall of Fame O-line. 30-28. Eagles win the game. And a nail-biter. Because I think Daniel Jones and that coaching staff are going to have some success on them. I think the Eagles are going to come out, and I think they're just got to stay patient. Even if the Giants grab a lead. By the way, the best thing for the Giants, if the Giants want to win this game, do not get behind because they'll run the clock on you and they'll run you out of the game. It's important that the Giants have a lead going in half. If they don't, they can't. I don't think they can win, and I don't think they can put up the offensive firepower that the Eagles can, if healthy again. That's always the asterisk here. And here's the thing about Hassan Reddick. Hassan may run into a few sacks, but they're going to move him around as much as they possibly can because they don't have the offensive firepower in the offensive line that the Eagles do to protect and pass probe. That's why you saw him moving around the way they did. Barkley's also the key here for the Giants. He's a key pass catching. He's I'll tell you this. Saquon Barkley is a dual threat back. He can catch, take it to the house. He can run it up the middle and take it to the house. Rare guy. Keeping him contained will keep Daniel Jones contained. If Barkley starts getting established, the Eagles are in for a four quarter football game. Okay. Now I would say this to you. Watch this. Do the and, and you have to understand something about matchups. You don't have to have an equal roster like the Eagles to beat them. You don't. 
What is the one thing that the Giants have that the Eagles aren't great at? They got to feature back. Stopping your run, they're 16th, up from 22. Better. Their linebackers struggle at covering tight ends. I don't know who this kid was last week. Can they do that again? Like, again, somebody asked me about the Giants a couple minutes ago. I don't know yet. Can they put two games together? I'm not sure. However, their coaching's better. Look at what they've done. Like I said, look at what they've done at the beginning of the year. It was a Barkley-centric team. And in the process of seven months, they have changed that into a Daniel Jones team. Because the more confidence they got in him, the more they saw him producing, the more they were comfortable in the plays they were designing for him. It's almost like the way they look at Jalen. You're comfortable on fourth down with Jalen Hurts. Why? Because Jalen has mastered the fourth down quarterback sneak as good as Brady. When you see Daniel Jones getting out in the perimeter, you understand that this guy, I'll tell you this, one thing about Jones, Jones is, listen, I'm saying he's pretty accurate and He's got a little Aaron Rodgers in him in the perimeter. When he breaks out into space, right or left, that's another key thing. He's not a right guy. What I mean by that is some guys like Montana like to roll right all the time. He can roll both ways. He's pretty, he's a pretty good athlete. And he he makes plays rolling both ways. That's a trick. That's coaching too. Okay, that's coaching. Keep an eye on third down. Look at what the percentages are. If you start to see the Giants slip below 28%, the defense is doing their job. If you see the Giants up around 48, 53, somewhere in between there, the Giants are moving the ball. Keep an eye on time of possession. The rushing yards, obviously turnovers. That's going to be essential in this thing. I think that game in Minneapolis gave the New York Giants a ton of confidence. Okay? You you, you, you believe. Okay? You believe you can beat this team. Now, they're also being pitched. They're not as healthy as they were when we played them in week 14. See, that's a coaching Mistake sometimes when you hear people do that. Hey, this isn't the same team we played in week 14. What happens when the Eagles show up and all of a sudden they are and they knock you in the face and knock you on your ass? Then you get blown out. I'm always, I'm always careful to say, be expecting their best. I don't coach you the other way. Hey, that's not the same team. I don't like that because when you get surprised and they do punch you in the face, To me, that's a remedy to get destroyed in a game. Okay? I'm not going to tell you that because what happens if the guy hits you back? I want you to fight back. I don't want you to be anything unexpected. Hey, expect, expect the Eagles at their best. And if it just so happens, you notice Lane can't finish, Jalen's not as healthy, all of a sudden you get more confidence as the game goes on. You don't want it going the other way. You want your guys expecting to be in a fist fight. Okay? I hate when coaches do that. Hey, we're playing better than them. I don't even like to go there. We're 14 and three. We had to play playoff football for two months. You know, you know what I mean? You, you, you may say shit like this. Hey, they're not going to know what to expect when they see us because we're a different giant team. That, that's cool talk. I'm all right with that because you are a different giant team, I think. Okay, if I were the Giants, I would expect the Eagles best. And if happens to come anything short of that, the Giants would be, I think the Giants would be in the ball game anyway. I do. I think the Giants would be in the ball game anyway. I think the fans would be a factor, but I'll tell you something too. That place is going to get rowdy if that thing's close in the fourth. And that place is going to be electric. 
And there's no doubt fan bases like Buffalo, Pittsburgh, Green Bay, Chicago, um, Philadelphia, players feel it. Players feel it. The more the game goes on and it's close, the more pressure the Eagles have. You're a seven and a half point favorite. Okay? You mean to tell me you get into the fourth quarter and you should expect close games. Pretty much every one of those games last weekend were close ball games. Look at what was that? A point spread of 14 points? The Jags were underdogs? Or no, was the Dolphins? Shit, man, Skylar Thompson almost beat their ass. Don't look at that shit. All right. Let me get to Jalen Hurts here now. Let me get to Hurts. This is Jalen's second biggest test of his career. He passed the first test. Having a exceptional regular season, that's his first test. But guess what? When you're considered a franchise quarterback, welcome to the NFL, Jalen. If you're calling him elite and franchise, I'm not. Because he hasn't done anything or won anything. Here's his second test. It's Saturday night. Don't worry about Super Bowls or NFC Championship games because every moment that you've been in a championship setting, you've been destroyed. Everyone from college to the pros. This is your chance now because if you lose, they're going to start bringing everything I just brought up up because they always do. It's funny when I listen to people talking about Aaron Rodgers, they tell half the story. They never bring up he won a Super Bowl and a Super Bowl MVP. They exclude that to fit a narrative. To me, I don't think you can have a narrative on one's resume. And the people that take a shit on the great resumes traditionally don't have a legacy of their own. And that's why they dissect legacies. Me, I like the entire story. Like here. Okay. And I'll tell you what, Trexler, I ain't talking about Josh Allen or Joe Burrow's got an AFC championship, dude. Your guy ain't won shit yet. This is about Jalen Hurts. No one else. Your guy, stay on, stay on point, guys. Stay on point. Stay on point. Every time he's been in a championship moding will be brought up. Every time that Joe Burrow has been in a championship setting, he has excelled. National championship, AFC championship. This week he's got no O-lineman. That won't matter to him. He'll make that Buffalo game close. Okay. This is a great moment. This is one of those moments that Jalen has to take. And like I said, has to have a Philly moment. And you can't go like this. Well, he'll play well. Where do you get that from? What, what, what championship setting can you, can you go to? Shit, I can almost do that with... Trevor Lawrence, he never lost his composure in the second half. Did they have a ton of turnovers in the first? Yeah, but they never lost, and he believed in his coach, and they won the playoff game. And, you know, everyone's like, well, well, Sills, Jalen played against the GOAT. Oh, I see. So you can make excuses up for Peyton Manning getting destroyed by Brady his entire career. Okay? But, but you make excuses for Peyton. Peyton's an underachiever. Shit, the guy in Pittsburgh did more than, than Peyton Manning did in the postseason. Fact. Peyton won one Super Bowl in Indy. Roethlisberger won more. Peyton had to go somewhere else to win it. Shit, his own brother is more successful in the postseason. At least his brother beat Brady. 
How many times did Peyton Manning get destroyed by Tom Brady and the Patriot teams? A ton. But we selectively pick who we want to choose not to hammer. So we'll go after Rodgers because he's non-vaccinated or whatever stupid reason. Okay? <laughs> I told everyone Hertz was, was, he's tops in all categories. What categories? It ain't passing yards. It's not completions. It's not attempts. It's not touchdown passes. Completion percentage and quarterback ranking. Cr- great. So if I throw the ball 17 times a game less than you, come on, man. By the way, how many? I mean, I didn't want to go there. Peyton Manning was a complete flop, if according to some of you. He was 14 and 13. Is that a good record? Peyton Manning is 14 and 13 in the postseason. 14 and 13. <laughs> 14 and 13. And the majority of those 13 losses were you know to who. Okay, 14 and 13, Peyton Manning. And Aaron Rodgers is 13 and 12. But Aaron Rodgers sucks and Manning's great. Yeah, okay. (laughs) Turnover ratio. There you go, baby. The least gifted passer in the postseason is your boy Jalen Hurts. But maybe the best quarterback in the postseason. Think about that for a little bit. He's the least gifted passer of any. Let me see. Yeah, he's the least gifted passer of the final eight quarterbacks in the playoffs. But he just might be your best quarterback. And you'll see what I mean. If he's able to get this thing to Glendale. You're going to have to throw to win in the playoffs. Okay? Okay. He's probably better than Daniel Jones. He's probably, I don't know, probably better. But then again, Jan, Daniel Jones throws the trash cans right now. I mean, there's not even Devontae Smith on that team. <laughs> and he almost threw for just as many passing yards as Jalen did. That shows you. He had nobody in New York to throw the ball to. I don't even know if there's a guy over 600 yards receiving, is there? Danny Dimes. <laughs> Hardest worker. Welcome to the NFL. Big deal. What, you think everybody else doesn't work in the NFL? Jalen is going to have a 400-yard passing game. Silly <laughs> uh, <laughs> was the first person I've heard bring up Manning squandered outside of my uh, – hey, hey, Peyton Manning? You think he overachieved or underachieved in Indianapolis, Alf? Over or underachieved? What do you think? Do you think he over or underachieved? Peyton Manning in Indy. Threw for a ton of yards. Shit, he's got just as many wins in Indianapolis as Joe Flacco has in Baltimore. (laughs) Oh, yeah, I forgot. Hurts making fifty million, not happening. Never, never. Fifty million. Let's do this now. Let's go here. Brian Dable versus Nick Sirianni and his coaching staff. Who you got? Who do you have? Who do you got? Double. 4K, baby. Where is it? 35 touchdowns. Never happened. Hey. Brian Table versus Nick Sirianni. What coaching staff do you buy into more in this game on Saturday night? Sirianni. New York. Sirianni by 10 miles. (laughs) Sirianni. Okay, what's Nick's job? (laughs) 
Nick, Nick. Nick is not the head coach. He's the head coach with the nameplate on the door. Don't you get it? I mean, Nick Sirianni, how much say does he have in the game plan being constructed, you think? A little? A lot? Or is it the quarterback's decision-making on RPOs? When you got a co- – hey, all I, all I needed to know was watching Gardner Minshew get coached. It was very evident. That staff don't know shit. That staff doesn't know shit. Hey, let's give let's give Gardner Minshew the same game plan and the same playbook that Jalen has. You heard Seth Joyner a couple days ago that was on the program going, man, go out into the draft and get a guy that runs the Jalen Hurts system because Gardner Minshew can't. But yet the Eagle coaching staff thought he could. And he can't outrun. He, he couldn't outrun a dude working at White Castle. But you yet put a game plan together for a dude that couldn't jump over a stack of quarters. And it was the Hurts game plan. Dude, I saw Brian Dable and I saw Kafka put a game plan together with the B team or the JV Giants. And it pushed the Giants and it made the Eagles have to play their starters all 60 minutes of the ball game. Congratulations to you. In the final game against the JV Giants, Brian Dable made you play the Eagle first-team guy 60 minutes. How crazy is that? You tell me what a better coaching staff is. The king of starting the wave or the guy in New York? I think the guy in New York is superior, and I don't think it's close. That's right, baby. Team Dable. All right, let's go here now. (laughs) By the way, rankings of the quarterbacks that are in the playoffs. Not my rankings. Not my rankings. A network ranking. Okay, a network ranking. What do you think they got Hurts ranked? We'll get to that here in a minute. Jones versus Hertz. Who has the better game? Who has the better game? Hertz or Jones? Jones is more accomplished than your guy. Know this going into this game. And as my boy Tone would say, technically, <laughs> he's technically, technically, <laughs> hurts, hurts by a mile, <laughs> hurts by a mile. Okay, hurts by a mile. <laughs> yeah. Look at look look at Rock Steady. Hopefully hurts. Jones never made a pro bowl. Oh no. <laughs> Don't get bounced. MVP candidate. Who has the better game? Who's more likely? Okay. Who's more likely to have the better game? Let's take a look at what they're facing. Dimes Jones or Jalen Hurts? Jones is 1-0 in the playoffs. Jalen Hurts is 0-1. What if Jalen can't run? What if he can't run? What if he can't run? Travis says Jones. 
Jones only threw for 233 times this year. Big deal. Who gives a shit? This is Saturday. Saturday night. Stay, stay with me, guys. What you did in September matters nothing here. Nothing. Matters nothing. You really think this is a question? I do because your guy has shit the bed the entire time he's ever played in the postseason. College to the pros. You bet I do, Mask. There's nothing to hang on where you're telling me that he's going to have a great postseason yet. You got to give me more than just wishful thinking. The kid in New York at least has performed and won. And let's not forget, Jalen Hurts didn't play Tom Brady. He played against the Buccaneer defense. Brady don't play linebacker. Jones will fall back to earth tomorrow? Why? Because you think Jonathan Gannon is going to out... Here's why I think Jones may have a better game. He's got a better play caller. He's got better coaching staff offensively. They're smarter than Nick staff. One game, 60 minutes. This isn't best of seven. So one game for 60 minutes of football... You take Sirianni over the coach of the year in the NFL and Brian Dable. Brian Dable's going to be the NFL coach of the year because it's New York. Probably get it over Doug. And probably the guy in I, – I, I think Sirianni's probably fourth or third because the guy in Detroit will get some votes too, Dan Campbell. Doug Peters can get huge votes because of what he did, not only just winning ball games. But getting into getting into the postseason and winning a division title. Look, 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 look at this. We beat them by 26. Yeah, you also killed Washington. They turned around and smacked you in the face and beat the doorknobs off you. I wouldn't go there. You beat them by 26. And you think that's going to roll out the second time through. I love how people think that that's going to be standard. It's not. Yeah, we had 12 sacks against Washington. Washington got a hold of you again, ran you off the field, beat you with Tyler Heineke. So the losses this year, some of the losses this year by the Eagles are to Tyler Heineke and Andy Dalton and Tyson Hill. Solid. Solid. Tyson Hill, Andy Dalton, and Tyler Heineke. Okay? Okay. <laughs> oh, boy. This is... This is going to be... <laughs> and again, hey, I think they're going to win. I do. I think they're going to win. I think the Eagles win this game. But it ain't seven and a half. Okay? No way. 30-28. Eagles win this ball game. I think this could come down even to a last drive. Okay? Could come down to a last drive. Allen lost to Mike White. He's 14 and three. He's 14 and three this year. And let me put it to you this way about Josh Allen. He had turnovers last week. Do you know in his five playoff games, he's got 17 touchdowns and three picks. His last five, 17 touchdowns and three picks. Wow. Woo, man. Man. 17 touchdowns and three picks in five playoff games, and he's three and two. How you doing? Jay says, none of that, none of what you're saying matters at all on Saturday night. 60 minutes, whatever, doesn't get out of character and stick to the game plan. Can they stick to the game plan will be the question. The Giants will. They're patient and they're better coached. The New York Giants are a better coach football team than the Eagles. 
they're better coached. They're a better coached football team. Sorry, they're better coached. They got a better coordinator on both sides of the football. Okay. You won't show your face come Monday. <laughs> Why? I'm picking you to win. Robert, that's a great question. Does Lane Johnson play a full game? Man, I hope so. He plays a full game. Chances the Eagles of spreading out the win even more with point differential. In my opinion, I, I, I he finishes the game. Eagles probably should put this thing away early. But if the Giants do what I think they're going to do and spread that shit out, and I think they're going to figure out whether or not he's healthy right out of the gate, okay? Sills wants us to squeeze out a game. You're going to squeeze out a game. You're not going to – you ain't dominating this Giant team. That ain't happening. You haven't dominated anybody in a month. Who have you dominated in a month? Hey, Maniac, who have you dominated? The Saints? The Cowboys? The JV Giants? The Bears? Who have you dominated? What team have you dominated? I must have missed that game. I must have missed that. Okay. Must have missed that. Sirianni talks about momentum. He was talking about it today. And he was also talking about big moments for his players. Those are good conversations. There's players on that team, that Eagle team, that are as accomplished as all get out. And he was talking about how this is a great moment to gravitate to and how this could be really a defining moment for certain players. You know who he's talking about. He's talking about Jalen. Okay? Okay? Who the Giants dominate, says Trexler. Minnesota. Just like you guys. That was a dom- They dominated Minnesota. Giants dominated them, just like you guys did. But this isn't a playoff game. Well, wait a minute. Nicole laughing, Minnesota. Well, who's your big domination game this year? Nicole, who who is your big domination game? Who's the big what's the biggest win this great point? So the Giants dominate the Vikings in the postseason. What is the Eagles' big game of the year that they dominated an opponent? Who? Well, give me those five teams. Who'd they dominate? What's your big win of the year? What's your big win? Steelers. <laughs> Did they make the playoffs? Did they make the playoffs? The whole schedule. Name me your opponent. Don't be afraid. Come on. The Commanders, the Vikings, and Tennessee. Two of those teams are non-playoff teams. The Giants. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Jags and Vikings. Okay. Jags and Vikings. <laughs> Jag- Green Bay didn't make the playoffs. Pittsburgh didn't make the playoffs. The Jags. Okay. The Jags. <laughs> Your big win of the year is the Jags. Okay. No, no. Pick one. What's your... If Minnesota is a shitty win for the Giants in the postseason, in the wild card round, what's your big win? What's the one big win? The Jags? Okay. Jags beat the Cowboys with Dak, too. 
you lost with Dak. When you played Dak, you lost to him. The Jags beat him. How's that one? The Jags' big win is the Cowboys with Dak Prescott. Your big win is the Cowboys with Cooper Rush. <laughs> yeah. Green Bay didn't make the playoffs, dog. So you're giving me your big win was against the third team. Congratulations. Okay. You beat the Green Bay Packers. Jags upset would be fun. Pick one, man. Giants, commanders, and Vikings. Commanders didn't make the playoffs either. Giants beat up the Vikings just two minutes ago. So your big wins the the uh, nine six and one Giants. Okay, is it Giants or Jags? Which one? Pick one, because the big win of the year for the Giants is destroying them at home in their building, not in your building, in a playoff game. They crushed them. They beat your team, <laughs> but in the playoffs and on the road. Green Bay. Green Bay was under 500. They didn't destroy him. <laughs> Justin Jefferson had under 50 yards receiving, didn't he? Didn't he have under 50 yards receiving in that game? As far as I'm concerned, 20 to 24 is crushing. You don't think Minnesota is crushed right now that they got sent home by a New York nobody giant team? Shit, dude, I can't name one wide receiver outside of that stiff holiday. I, I can't, I can't think of one. Hertz has no playoff wins. Dak is in the NFC championship. Dak hope he he plays. Hurts, Dak is 2-0 and versus Hurts. Hurts is, he's not scared, buddy. He has had shitty success. I think we've been by more than seven. If they, if they do exactly what we said, okay, I think they can. Okay. Niners have won 11 consecutive ball games. They're the better team today. But that narrative can be changed. Very simple with a great performance by the Eagles on Saturday night. You don't have momentum. You're going to have to create momentum with this game on Saturday night. You're not going into the game with momentum. Played the 17th game, which was a shitty game, and you had to play all 60 minutes of your starters just to get the home field, which is important, and it was needed. But Jesus Christ, don't tell me you're playing with momentum. You're not. Cowboys have more momentum. Niners have more momentum. Does momentum mean it all? Absolutely not. And I don't want anybody to take that for what that is. Momentum, great. Momentum is your next game. <laughs> Momentum's your next game. Well, well, Matthew, before, before anybody starts talking how shitty Dak is, Jalen's got to do something first. He has not. I mean, here, let me show you what Jalen is in the postseason right now. You know what that is? That's his resume. That's not good or bad. That's his resume. We dominated no one of real importance, but we won overall. We will win again tomorrow, but it'll be close. That's my take. That's my take. Momentum aside, I'm glad that they have to play. They had to play to the bitter end in the final game. They needed a wake-up call. You know, there's something, you know, Tone, there's something to be said about that. There's totally something to be said. Hey, you guys want this opportunity to be slipped away here? If we don't take care of business, if the, listen, guys, all kidding aside, if they if, if they take care of business and they're patient, they win this ball game. 
You guys are crazy if you think this is a blowout here. Okay. Hey, hey, I will say this about Dak's resume. Here. <laughs> Here's Dak's resume. Just a couple little chicken scratches on it. <laughs> I wouldn't write home about his postseason accolades either. Like, like, like this, look. Which still, that just looks like chicken scratches. Yeah, it is, because that's Dak's resume too. Here. Here's Jalen's. Nothing on it. And here's chicken scratches for Dak. <laughs> I wouldn't be writing home or anything here. Okay? Rent's due, baby. It surely is. Philly 500 will join us at 4.30 Eastern time. I'm going to look at some of the Vegas and Atlantic City numbers here. Plus, a television network ranked the Elite Eight quarterbacks that are in the Elite Eight football games. We're going to take a look at that. We'll do that all next. Keep it right here on the National Football.